Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you how I make these Rockler pizza cutters and these have the framework on both sides of the pizza cutter instead of just one side. I'll put up an image here so you can see the difference there. As far as I know Rockler is the only one making a kit like this and I like that because to me it just seems to be more solid to it. And now the kit contents that this comes with is just basically the pizza cutter itself and the threaded insert that goes inside the handle here once you've got it turned and everything. We've got the threaded insert there. That's so you can remove the handle to wash the hardware part of it. So. I might notice the uh, stand that I've got here, use that as a display stand at craft shows and stuff and I've made a lot of them and sold a lot of them to people who wanted to have a stand for their pizza cutter, especially one like this because this is hefty and it's got a four inch stainless steel blade. Anyways, uh, the instructions that come with this tell you how to make this and how to turn the handle and I have to tell you, instructions don't offer much. A small sheet of paper here just one sided, nothing on the back. No pictures or illustrations to show you how to do things. It's just uh, all text. So you have to kind of know what you're doing or <laughs> struggle through it. Uh, I do is I do a different way of putting this together and turning it and so forth. And I'll show you that in this video how I do it, which I think works better for me anyway. Uh, I often deviate from the instructions a little bit based on what I think makes sense for me and what works. So I'll show you how I do this. So please watch this. If you like it, please give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Also, please share it with your family, friends, and fellow crafts enthusiasts. Also, please subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything new. And please give us your comments. We want to hear what you want to see and what your thoughts are. So, let's get to this project now. And so I mount the spindle stock here in this mount that I've got for the headstock on my lathe that holds square pieces on there. Then I've got this 27 64th bit drilling a hole into it inch and a half deep. And I had advanced it along and just cranked my quill here to advance the drill bit. So I get down to the mark where I've got the tape at. Sometimes I have to bring my banjo up a little further, or not the banjo, but tailstock a little bit closer, reposition it, then I should be able to finish it from this point. And I can take this piece out of here, be ready for the next step. Tapping it out so it'll fit my mandrel that I made for driving this. Alright, so after I've drilled the holes in the end of these blanks, or these spindles, I've done this at the lathe. And the next step is to tap these holes out. These were drilled at 27 64 and an inch and a half deep. So then I tap them out using a half inch 13 TPI threads per inch tap and I just get it started in here it's tapered a bit so it'll kind of straighten itself up as you kind of get this going it gets going pretty straight and it'll cut the threads and back it out once in a while to shake out some of the dust uh, from the cutting until you get this cut all the way down and through and once you get done squeaky I take these mandrels that I've made for the lathe head and once these threads have been cut then I can thread this on as my mandrel, mount this into the chuck, drill chuck on the lathe head and then I can turn this and of course I bring up my tailstock to the end here to give it support until I get this to a pretty good shape and then I'll do some parting later on uh, and then finish off the end here. All 
right, so I've got uh, my spindle blank here that I mounted onto these uh, mandrels that I made. Uh, basically a half inch by a 13 TPI bolt and I cut the head off the bolt and cleaned up the shaft here a little bit so it'll run smoothly on the lathe. So I get these screwed on here and of course I went to the bandsaw, a little jig I've got, and I trimmed off the corners on the blank here instead of four corners. Now I've got eight so it's more of an octagon shape. That'll make it a lot easier on the lathe here so I've got less corners to hit, make it smoother. And then I've got my drill chuck mounted on my headstock here. And this is a different kind of drill chuck that doesn't fit into a Morse taper. This one fastens the screws onto my headstock thread. So I'll show you here. This is a one inch thread on this one. And it's got a one inch thread on that. I've tried drill chucks on these before uh, with the Morse taper to fit inside there. And they kept rattling loose on me. This one I got from PSI and it stays on very well. Excellent. And of course I use these little plastic washers in here to help these from getting locked up too tight. So next I'm going to put this spindle on here to work with and then I'll tighten up the chuck. Then I'm going to slide up the tailstock. I'll bring up the tailstock to the end. Try and match it up with the dimple I've got in there with my center mark I did before. Get it very close to it but not quite touching. And then I'll tighten down the tailstock there. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to start this up so it's running. And then I'm going to advance the quill on this tailstock into that so it'll pretty well center itself. Okay. Got that, so that's uh, set up. Next step, I'll set up my banjo and start getting this to a cylindrical round. And then after that, I'll start shaping it. Okay, so I've got this down to a rounded cylindrical shape and I'll start shaping it from here. This end is the threaded end. It's gonna have the threaded insert into it for the handle. And what I'll do is shape this down to a diameter of about one inch or slightly more than one inch there because that'll be the size of the handle part that'll fit up to it. This end here is where I'm going to part it and shape the end of the handle here. So what I'm going to do is make a line mark on this and then I'll start shaping the rest of this because this is where I'm going to do the parting at and I'll get some of that shaped in there. parted this down to a point here and then I'll start shaping down to that then as I get closer to being done I'll part this completely now I'll work on getting this other end down to the size that I want for the handle end I check this periodically with my calipers here that are set to about an inch and one eighth uh, to make sure I'm getting within tolerance here. I don't want to get it down too far. Okay, I've got this end down to a good diameter that I want, so I'll start shaping it from here. I'm going to get this down to about a cylindrical shape of about an inch and three eighths, inch and a quarter to inch and three eighths. That's a good size for a handle grip, uh, especially for women who have smaller hands. And I'll get it down to that and then do some more shaping. Periodically I stop and check and see how I'm coming along. Get really close here. Sometimes you have to stop and check the temperature of what's going on in your cutter here. Ooh, that's, that can be quite hot. We don't want to get too hot just like with drill bits. We don't want to uh, lose the temper on our blades here or the drill bits. I'm going to give this a little bit of time to cool, and I'll be right back. All 
All right, so we got that. Uh, I want to make sure it's down to, at the widest part, the inch and three eighths. Now I'll start shaping this further. Putting a shape uh, like for the front end here, and then we'll shape this handle so it's thinner at this part and then expands out here, then rounds off at the end here. So we're getting a pretty good shape there to uh, get to the point where I'm going to start doing the sanding. Of course, another step here I'm going to take is to burn some lines into this. I'm going to mark these in with a pencil and I'm going to copy this from one of the other ones I've done here. And I'll mark the lines based on what I've got there because this is a set of four that I'm doing up for a friend of mine. And so I like to match them as much as we can. I'm about to put those lines on there. I'll start it up and then I'll mark them with the pencil. So I can faintly see it. Then I use a skew, point it this way to groove it a little bit. Take the banjo out of the way. Take my wire burners here. I use these blue ones, they're the whitest ones I've got. And just hold these in here until I get a little bit of smoke and that burns in the lines. That adds for our light nice decorative accent and I can do the sanding. So this process here I'm going to start sanding this down. I'll sand this from a 150 up to a 600 grit and then I'll start finishing it from there. I run this at about 600 to 800 RPM for doing the sanding. Getting around the end of it here to sand it off to be rounded over. Of course, once I've parted, I'll finish that up some more. Okay, and in between sanding grits, I will clean off the uh, dust from the previous one. Also, like to take and take the sandpaper and go across this way and rotate this around as I do that to remove any um, cylindrical sending marks. And I'll finish that up and get it through the 600. I've got this handle shaped and sanded to 600 grit. Now I'm going to start putting on the finish on this and I've got a couple of different kinds of finishes that you can choose from. I'm choosing a what we call OB juice and I got this formula from uh, Captain Eddie on YouTube and I'll put a link to that below and I think OB juice uh, comes from I think somewhere down south in Georgia and maybe OB stands for old boy juice and it's supposed to get a good and shiny finish too and other finishes I've tried using were Aussie oil and high friction polish and they all have their different techniques and so forth to use. Um, this OB juice is something I make up myself based on the formula from Captain Eddie and that's a good way of doing it and saving some money and it works well. So, But I had to learn how to use it. Uh, I had to learn a few techniques on how to use it I don't know if I'm using it right just yet based on all the videos I've watched on it and 
maybe I stumbled on the right way just by mistake. I don't know. Anyways, I'll show you what I do and how I do this. First off, as I rip off a piece of towel, paper towel, I like this uh, select the size paper towels because I can just get smaller portions of it. Then I take my OB juice bottle and I shake this up, get it mixed up really well because it gets separated if it stands too long. Then what I've learned to do is to wipe this on before I run the lathe and I'm going to run it at about 2000 RPM once I get this coated with this OB juice. And to coat it with the OB juice though, I'm going to use it uh, just rotating it by hand in order to get this rubbed in and spread on. So I put a little bit on the paper towel here and then just work this on and rotate this around and get it worked in there. I'll have to do a few of these uh, applications like this. You can see how it's getting on there. And try and get it on all the different edges. Add a little more as you need to. Make sure we get it kind of covered well. This is just to start out before we even start the lathe up. And this is red oak I'm working with here, so it's kind of a porous material. It's an open grain wood, so it'll take a lot to soak that in. Uh, so I go over it a few times here, make sure I've got it worked in really well. And try and get along some of this edge here, the edge of the handle. Make sure I get that all coated really well. Then I'm going to start this up, run to about 2000 RPM. And then just apply some pressure, get it warmed up uh, for about a minute until it gets pretty well sealed on there and starts to shine. It'll take about three or four coats to really get to a final finish. A lot of times I'll use a timer. So you can see it's starting to look fairly good, uh, about another three coats and this will start getting pretty shiny and give it a good protective coat. I have four coats of the OB juice on this handle here so I can get a pretty good shine on it and this is ready to uh, part the end off of it and then I'll finish the end of this handle and that'll be finished as far as the finishing goes. What I do is I'll part this here and since i am got this mounted on a mandrel at this one end I don't have to sit here and hang on to this or anything uh, as I part it because it's not going to go flying anywhere on me. So as you can see, this part here comes loose, and that's uh, parted from there. Now it leaves um, a little bit on the end here. I have to get the camera to another angle, see that better. That's a little bit of a nib there, and a little bit of a rough spot there. I'll clean that up with a lathe chisel. I'll bring my tail out to here like that and get that cleaned up and then get it sanded and then just finishing up that one spot with another four coats of OB juice and that will be done. Alright, so I'm going to adjust my tool rest height here so I've got a good height. Let me get this tailstock out of the way. Adjust my tool rest height so I've got a good height. Uh, Want the blade sitting about level and straight. So that's about right. Get a little bit closer if I can. Now I'm going to slow this down a little bit because this is not going to be a perfect balance. So it's going to wobble just a little bit. But I'll still be able to get this cleaned up a bit. 
then do the sanding. Right now with 150 through 600 grit. Slow down the RPM a little bit for sanding. That's looking pretty good, so it's just going through the grits and getting it smooth. That's just looking better and better with each grit as I go through this. And the final grit, 600. That's looking really good. Almost doesn't need a finish, but we need to finish it just the same. Okay, get the old boy juice out here again. And as before, put some on my pad. And I work this in to the wood. Get it in there pretty good. Then I'll start it up and run about 2,000. And do about one minute at a time here. I give this a few minutes to dry between coats, although it's pretty much as dry, but I'll give it a few minutes between coats and then I'll put on three more coats and then it'll be done. All right, so once these handles, the finish of cured and dried and stuff, then I have to remove these mandrels off of these here. As you can remember, I drilled these out previously to a 27 64 and then I tapped them out to a half inch 13 TPI uh, for fitting onto these mandrels. Now what I need to do is to enlarge in this hole to a half inch. So I put a half inch bit on my drill press here. I'm not going to really run it. I'm just going to uh, set it up here and just kind of hand drill it, hand twist this on here and it'll cut out basically the tap threads for me and then I can put the insert into this perfectly well. Once I get up to the bottom of the hole here the chuck will start turning as it is now. So make sure I get up there good enough then pull it back down Tap out the sawdust out of that. Now I'm going to go over and screw the threaded insert into this first. Then I'll remove it and then put the epoxy glue on and then put the threaded insert back into there. Then I'll turn this handle on there until it lines up. I like to usually line up the wood grains to be at a certain um, angle that's going to be most appealing. So I will do that next. Alright, so here I've mixed up some epoxy, or I'm mixing it up. That's enough here to do two handles. I'm going to be doing here. I like to rotate this around and make sure I mix it up well. Then, with the yellow wrench that comes with these kits, I take these threaded inserts that comes with the kit. And I get these started in here and get them screwed in to a point where they're pretty well, not bottomed out, but at least a little bit less than flush with the end of that. Then I screw it back out. I'll do that on both these handles. Back it out. They'll knock out any sawdust that may be in there. And what I'm going to do is just dip some of this epoxy inside that hole there. Spread it in. Then as I screw that in, it'll 
uh, spread that epoxy around in there for me. So, and if I get a little bit off on the sides here, then kind of wipe it off a little bit with some paper towel. And I'll start this in, and what I'll do is kind of try and catch into the thread as I had previously made, and screw this in. Slightly below the surface level. Take the pizza cutter blade in, screw it onto the handle, and these will unscrew later too. And I get to a point and I get and I check to see where is my wood grains lining up at. This one's actually lining up fairly well here, so that's a good point. I loosen a little bit just to make sure it's gonna stay. And then I'll set it aside and let it cure. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration. Maybe you'll make some pizza cutters for yourself or your friends. Uh, make great gifts. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And share it with your family, friends, and fellow crafts enthusiasts. So, also, please subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything. The subscribe button's right down on the lower right of the screen, and it's a tiny little button. And also, please give us your comments. Love to hear what you want to see and what you think. So, we get a lot of great ideas from you. So, as I say in the Red Green Show, ladies don't find you handsome, ladies they should find you handy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.